So for this video, we're going to finish off the tour that we started last week uh, with Joshua McWilliams, aka Water Pigs USA. And uh, you guys really seemed to enjoy it last time. Uh, also, if you haven't already watched that video, I would recommend you go back and watch it. It's a very good one. I really enjoyed it, and so did a lot of other people. Um, so let's get to it. So even though Josh specializes in goldfish, he at heart is still a hobbyist and he still dabbles with a lot of other species of fish. So here we kind of have a guppy community tank going on. He's got a, a lot of plants he's experimenting with as well. Um, some of them are working out, some of them are not. Uh, and you experiment with them because you want to see what will survive well with goldfish. With goldfish, yeah. Not all of them though. Some of them you just probably have anyway right yes yeah. like like all of us we have these uh impulse buys which is not too uncommon in the fish hobby now some things that stick out to me here you got some fantastic looking guppies this orange reddish one Let's see if i can get it to focus on here it really stands out compared to all the other ones and it is a unique color compared to everyone but I think the blue light on the on your LED makes it more vibrant as well. Now you got quite a variety of plants here. You want to give us a rundown of what you got? Uh, yes, I've got some swords. Some swords. There's going to be the ones in the back here, right? Mm-hmm. Got a sword and. These hit. are uh, actually cuttings from my goldfish tank of a rosette sword. And above that is flame moss. Which looks really cool. So this is my first time seeing flame moss in person. And the big difference between java moss and flame moss is the way it grows. It grows vertically, almost like it's trying to reach the top, which is really cool. All right, then... Then here it looks like you got a few crips. I have right. some pink crips, and the uh, those are actually the pink flamingo crypt. And then I have the traditional crypt that I picked up at one of the big box stores. I don't know the exact variety. Yeah, I'm not sure either. And the is this a, is that a nubius back there? That is a uh, nubius. Oh. And that's some that sprouted off of my other nubius in my goldfish tank. This uh, A lot of the, the cuttings and sprouts from uh, my main tank go into this tank to see if they survive. I'm a nubius fan, if you didn't know. It's my favorite plant. Can't kill it. Exactly. It, <laughs> it just grows. It doesn't need fertilizer. It doesn't need a lot of light. They do really well. What, uh, what scent plant do you got here, do you know? I honestly don't know. It was sold for uh, as a bunch deal at Aquarium Warehouse, a local place here in Tampa. Yeah, if you're local, I'm pretty sure you know what, what that place is. It's one of the most and popular. It was one of the bunches that they had available. Really didn't pay attention to the name. And it does well in certain tanks and not in others. Yeah, and goldfish eat it. Goldfish eat it. Okay. Goldfish eat it. They <laughs> ate most of it. That was what was left. It's actually got a nice purple color at the top. I wonder what that is. I'm sure someone on YouTube will probably recognize it and they'll comment. And you're not a fish keeper unless you have duckweed, right? Duckweed. It doesn't survive in the goldfish tanks because they eat it all. But in the tropical tank, they, they nibble away at it, but they don't really eat it completely down. All right, and then among other things, you also keep nano tanks. Yes. And you got a little five gallon. I got here. a little five gallon nano tank. Uh, it was my first attempt of doing anything tropical, um, and in there I started with just a few shrimp and a few endlers, and as you can see now, it's very populated with snails, uh, endlers, and the cherry shrimp. Cherry shrimp love to breed. They and the do. great thing about Florida water, well at least where we live, uh, they like our water the way it is. They do. Because I've had success, and I haven't really done anything to uh, 
I don't know, encourage breeding or anything like that, and they've just kind of run wild on, in my tank as well. I did. The, I was shocked, and they, but they've really done well. I pick out the ones that don't color up, and I feed them to a couple of my other fish that you'll see here in a bit. Obviously, a beautiful scaped tank, one of your show tanks that you have, and it's just amazing. Let me say that up front. It it really is an awesome looking tank from the plants to the goldfish in here. Um, it looks like you took a lot of time and care with this one. Yes, this one I probably spent the most amount of time on. Um, I, I was I had read quite a few blogs on uh, keeping goldfish and plants, and the next to uh, impossible feat, and I was bound and determined to try about any type and every type of plant till I found ones that for one would grow in lower light without CO2 and also would not be food for the goldfish because they love to eat plants. So in here most of it is different types of swords, java ferns, crypt, and anibus and that's comp different combinations of those. Uh, and I, you know, I found there are certain type of each one of those varieties that they actually will still eat. Um, so oh, sometimes really? it, it's it, it's per variety, not the actual species of the plant. It's actually can break down to different varieties. Certain varieties of crypt they would eat, and they wouldn't touch others. Yeah. So it was a it was a trial and error type way of getting this to this point. Um, and all the plants I also had to do because they will uproot anything from any type of substrate. Um, I actually used uh, super glue to glue the uh, plants in place on flat rocks and or the ones along the back wall I actually glued two suction cups and put them on the wall. So it was a creative way of getting around the goldfish's destructive behavior. <laughs> that's definitely one of the uh, bigger things that's, that people say with goldfish is that they'll just eat everything, especially when it comes to plants. And I think right now, just looking at this tank, you're kind of busting that myth, right? I mean, there's, you, you're, not, you're not saying you could keep any plant with them, of course, but yeah, there's definitely quite a variety that's available that you could keep with the fish. And on top of that, you know, it, I think it brings out their colors a little more as well. So it looks amazing Yeah, with I, the background and with covered in green, it looks lush. And then you have the gold and the fit or red. I, I get a little confused there because I want to say gold because they're called goldfish, but then they're called red in the, in the goldfish the world. The color right? is red in the goldfish world is what they consider anything that's that orangey tone. Um, orangey to red is considered red. Um, and to me, keeping them with the plants, um, the, the fish seem to be more active, vo more vibrant to me than the way most goldfish are kept in a blank scape because they, you know, they'll either injure themselves on decor or they'll eat anything living. So if you can find a nice variety of plants in and provide them, I think it's, it, it provides enrichment uh, swimming through the different types of plants, uh, they get some type of enrichment. They also will, uh, it helps with, you know, the, the bio load of the tank. Um, typically this tank, I only have to do water changes every other week, opposed to all of my others, I do weekly water changes to get rid of nitrates. Yeah, the plants are very helpful when it comes to reducing nitrates. And I think you also have some other things in here as well. I do um, have a few quarries. I have... Oh, there's one right there. The quarries I have, those are what they call false spotted quarries, which are really nice. And they are nice stocky. They don't get really long like some of the quarries do. They stay shorter bodied uh, and they get really stocky, um, much like my goldfish. <laughs> I have a couple of pygmies quarries in there that got thrown in there because they were in a tank that I turned into a brackish setup and I was told or I read that they wouldn't do as well in the brackish setup so I put them in here and they've been they've done pretty well 
Um, there's a couple varieties of snails that came in on plants and I do have a couple of the Japanese trapdoor snails. That's my favorite type of snail to keep with the goldfish. Is there a reason you like the Japanese trapdoor snail versus other fish? Or uh, other snails, I'm sorry? Yeah, the, the Japanese trapdoor is, uh, does not reproduce in the numbers that other varieties do, if they reproduce at all. Um, so to me, you don't get as many messy snail eggs. Like I did start with the, the nearite snails, and yes, those didn't breed, but they laid these hard, nasty eggs everywhere. Those are, my, uh, those are my favorite snails, so be careful, Josh. No, I, I know they look like little sesame seeds everywhere. Yes, See? So, yeah, if they're not going to eat those little seeds off the decor, you'll have them all over the place. And it's, and it's funny that, I, you know, there's a lot of varieties of fish that eat those snails. It's the one thing goldfish won't eat. Oh, really? <laughs> Is they do not mess with the nearite snail eggs. So I, I <laughs> did funny. happen to... Uh, well, I fed them to other fish that eat snails, <laughs> but uh, I got rid of them and now down to basically uh, just the Japanese trapdoors and then the common ram horn snails that just came in on some plants. And I also use those if a tank gets too much of a population, I pull it out and feed it to my other fish. All right, and along with fish, Josh is also dabbling in other things here. Now, what do we got here? Look at that. Like a statue there. He, f he looks royal with his head up. Suspicious of me. It's giving me the stink eye. Oh, yeah, he's good at that. And that is Drogo. He's a... Um, Drogo? Yeah, that sounds familiar. So he Game of Thrones. <laughs> I had a dragon, so I had to name him after a Game of Thrones character. Uh, I made his entire habitat from scratch with plywood, uh, plexiglass, paint, did uh, different flooring, created artwork for him to look at. <laughs> That's what I know is the artwork. I'm all about, you know, the making it feel like home animals you know giving them some I I enrichment to me uh, giving them something to look at some say you know animals can't really enjoy that I think they do he seems to feel at home uh, whenever I take him out of his enclosure typically he generally you know he likes to be held he likes to hang out with me but if I walk back towards it he's ready to jump back in it he doesn't want to escape so what, I use, what kind uh, of plant is that in the background? That is a actual artificial succulent. Artificial. And this is actually made out of a ceramic base. I thought it was a I thought it was a cactus. Look, that don't look that doesn't look safe, Josh. <laughs> it's very safe because it's fake. <laughs> yeah. um, and then I use the Italian uh, tile combined with river rocks and artificial turf as his flooring. Um, some people say, you know, they're meant to be desert and sand, but a lot of times they get impacted. So oh, I okay. typically chose something that was easy to clean uh, when it's time to clean out the bottom. And now Drogo really wants to know what you have there. Oh. I don't know if he's not happy or what. And his, uh, it looks like he's hungry. <laughs> 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 he hasn't been fed today. I don't want to upset him. But he um, he's going through his shed, so his head has not quite shed, but he's a um, translucent. Um, that's what gives him that really great orange with the blue bars along his back. He's really cool. But he's a really cool lizard. He really enjoys, uh, you know, being handled and going out he's got a pair of dragon wings and a top hat when he wants to get fancy really you got him dragon wings <laughs> yeah he's got dragon wings. oh that's awesome and typically put him on him every sunday when game of thrones uh, it's like a tradition oh yeah <laughs> who's gonna who's gonna be there at the end is it gonna be the khaleesi is she gonna be the queen i think so he thinks I think, so i think everyone hopes so but we'll see 
All right, then here, I did not know you had this until I came in, and I'm really jealous because I really like these fish, and they look awesome. When did you get these, uh, Josh? I actually got them just about a week and a half ago. Um, just when I came back from a trip, I was getting crickets for my bearded dragon, and they happened to have the puffer fish that I was looking for. Um, and these are figure eight puffers, max out between three and four inches. Uh, if, if raised together from a juvenile age, can live with other uh, puffer fish and with uh, smaller brackish varieties like bumblebee gobies. Bumblebee gobies? Hmm. What is that then? Uh, that right there is a bumblebee. Nice. Which I've had them for a while in fresh water, which they can tolerate, but they generally don't thrive. So I'm happy to actually transfer that tank into a, a brackish water tank so that way they really can get full life. Yeah, I've, I've, I've heard a lot of fish can be uh, tolerant of other water types, but yeah, then they, they just don't last as long. Um, so it's not optimal for those fish. So in the future of that tank, I'm going to put some more uh, of the faux spider wood a couple more plants and hopefully get a few more bumblebee gobies once i can find them well that concludes this video i hope you guys enjoyed it and make sure you guys support your local aquarium clubs uh because like i said on the last video me and josh are both part of the tampa bay aquarium society uh so by supporting your local aquarium clubs you meet a lot of cool people with common interest and uh, so until next time guys see ya